thank you to Natalia Chanwa, the rest of the women's national team uh, for qualifying, and we will get to watch them play in Paris. Natalie, you're about to be a four-time Olympian. Uh, how does that sound? Um, Makes me kind of feel old <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, what an honor. This will be 12 years um, in the Olympic quads that I've been playing with uh, Team Canada. Almost actually closer to 15 actually being on Team Canada. <laughs> so, once again, just old. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you say that, but you it's a part of this is also, well, she was the youngest player to ever play for the national team. So you got an early, <laughs> early start here. You're not exactly Luis Scola at like 43 here for Argentina. Um, so Natalie, you guys are going, but it, it looked a little touch and go there. So for anyone who missed it on Sunday, Canada lost and needed Spain to beat Hungary to qualify for the Olympics. Spain got down 22 points to Hungary and entered the fourth quarter down 14 but came back and pulled it off. Can you walk us through a little bit what it was like for you guys to be watching that game? Ooh, you know, the mentality going into the game was try to control your own destiny. So, of course, like, we were locked into the Japan game. A couple of shots, a couple of fouls, something goes a little bit different, and the game is won by Canada. So it was definitely heartbreaking um, for that outcome. But then we had to sit on the sideline and we had to watch. We had to watch Spain decide if we were going to go to the Olympics or not. And if you know any kind of history over the past couple quads here with Spain, we've always played Spain in tight games. So it was uh, definitely written in stone that we were meant to go to the Olympics because what a comeback down 20 to win by one. Um, you know, I've never celebrated another country winning, but them winning meant we won uh, and that we still get to keep this dream of Paris 2024 alive. So, okay, can you take us behind the scenes or some of the logistics? Like, uh, we heard, like, maybe some of the members were in the crowd watching physically. Some people were also, some video behind the scenes uh, of some of your teammates hugging each other, watching it on TV. So, like, how did it physically all go down in terms of you guys watching this performance from Spain that really ultimately saved Canada here? Yeah, we were all kind of spread out after the game. A couple players stayed at the arena. I went home or home temporarily. I went to the hotel to go hug, hug my son, Mav, and just I was heartbroken. So I went to gather myself at the hotel. And then I met up with like Bridget and uh, Kia and Sammy. And we were watching the game and just kind of just talking about anything but the game and all of a sudden everyone's like hey there's the game's actually getting close so we really locked in and I cried Kia was trying to convince me that I needed to play to LA before uh, we saw the final <laughs> result of the game and she's like just kidding you can just play with Team Canada six more months because we're going to Paris so <laughs> it was all over the place don't rule that out though five-time Olympian sounds pretty good too I think only four women have ever done that and only a couple of guys Scola was one of only a handful on the men's side let's not rule it out right Mm -hmm. No, uh, <laughs> I've decided that this will be my last Olympic game. So okay. for so much emotion, even more emotion was in that moment for me because I for a second was like, was that the last time I really put a Canada jersey on? Damn. Uh, and, you know, it turns out that God had a different plan and I'm putting a jersey on again to represent Canada now here in Paris. So um, obviously positive ending. You guys got there. It was meant to be Spain helped you out. Um, but you know, it was it was close there. So you guys went one and two in this tournament, close games against Spain and Japan that, that you weren't able to pull out. When we look ahead to what this team needs to do in Paris, um, what do you think you guys can learn from this one? What didn't click in this particular tournament that you guys can can kind of learn from and do a little bit better with come Paris? I think the fine details, it was a great reminder that it's really hard to do this. It's really hard to qualify for the Olympics. It's really hard to do it four times in a row for Canada basketball, our women's national team. So it was just a reminder that to compete and to play at the highest level, you have to do it every minute, 40 minutes. Because um, like you said, both those games were close for us, a couple possessions either way, and it would have been in the win column for us. So I think it's just a reminder that the details matter. And I went to um, a, a Olympic lab put on by the Canadian Olympic Committee um, a couple months ago in Quebec. And a couple of the speakers reminded you that if you want to kind of turn that page, if you want to get to the point where you're on the podium or you're successful year after year you have to do something different and it can't just be okay we qualified and we're arriving it has to be where are you making those little sacrifices where is that one percent better coming on a daily basis not just when you're getting together with your team so i think this 
us hanging on by a thread was just a reminder that you have to put that 1% change in every day. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the way you're mentioning it, now I'm thinking about it, like, could have very easily been a 3-0 and tournament. And, mm-hmm. and you know, there were, were leads, you know, that uh, could have been held on to and things like that. And, of course, that's where those little margins really add up. I'm curious, because this is going to be your fourth time. For some of them, it will be their first time as well. What did you make of some of the younger members of the team and how they performed in this, like, super high-pressure environment despite their young age? Uh, our coach, Victor, made a actually really good point at the beginning of the tournament that it's great to have experience, but sometimes you need that kind of fresh eyes, that um, deer in the headlights, Bambi vibe, uh, where you don't overthink things because you've been there. And so to have players that are going to be entering their first Olympics or maybe their second Olympics, because Tokyo doesn't really count um, because it was such a different environment. Uh, it'll add some fresh energy for us. Um, and then couple that with the experience of those have been to multiple Olympics. This will be Kia's third as well. Um, I think we'll have a, a great balance here of just people that are bright eyed, bushy tailed. And then those that are like, okay, I know what it takes in this moment and just mix it together. And I think we're going to have a great approach going into these games. Yeah. And I, I think watching, you know, these, these games here, and some of the past runs, it's like, you guys have a clear advantage on the inside. I mean, I thought you did a really good job, you know, on the glass defensively, you know, scoring when you could. I thought Kayla was really a big standout in this whole tournament run. Um, what can you say about Kayla Alexander's performance? Yeah, Kayla being named to All-Star 5, much, much, much deserved. She's put in the work. She's dedicated her time to Canada basketball. And you've even seen in her pro career how it's transitioning over here to our national team. And she's been dominant. Um, I can't say anything more. A little tidbit that I, might be my claim to fame because Kayla's being so great lately mm-hmm. that Kayla and I lived together when we were in high school. We went to Anita Basketball oh, Academy like Canada basketball. Yeah. <laughs> when I was wow. in the 10th grade and Kayla was in the 11th grade. So Kayla Alexander, my claim to fame was I lived with her, but <laughs> she's been huge for our program. And I love to see the growth of her game um, and just how dominant and powerful she's been for us um, and will be going into these games as well. And, uh, and an author. So, so make and sure to author. check the, and, the yeah, book out. Author, book. business owner, entrepreneur yeah all the things uh and she balances it so well and makes it look so effortless what can't she do yeah Um, what can't she uh (laughs) natalie we we mentioned earlier you were the youngest player to suit up for uh the national team and i i wonder with your experience with that what that was able to do for you early in your career you guys had silas swords on the roster for this one um obviously a big big part of this program's future um what do you think being with you guys for this event did for her and what can that early experience do for her as she goes forward in her career even in the past year of Sai being on our team just seeing her growth and how she's transformed her body how she's uh go like i love the big guard moments is what i call them but there was a couple where she was taking it to the rim and she wasn't soft and i was like that's grown women basketball and that's the difference when you're able to pull up some of our younger players like i did myself and get them that experience at what a pro level would be it's a different level and she's still in high school. So to see the growth that she'll also have when she gets to the NCA and her college program, um, the future of Canada basketball is bright when you have uh, these young ones being able to uh, be dominant at this point already. There you go. Well, Natalie, we appreciate you for joining us on the show. We're very much looking forward to seeing, um, well, first of all, we're very much looking forward to seeing the men finally join you guys at the Olympics. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's about time, really. Like, you know, where, where have y'all been? But uh, no, seriously, <laughs> congratulations once again. And uh, we'll look forward to cheering you guys on in the uh, in the summertime. Thank you. I'm so excited to have them here too. First time since 2000. So it'll be a can of basketball party. So cheer us on for sure. Thanks for having me.